Hello friends, this video on natural resources part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about another very important natural resource that is water, which is what the synonym of water is life because every life form needs water for their survival. So talking about importance of water is like very obvious and needless and also the list is huge. It is an important resource which is needed for survival of all sorts of life forms, whether it is plants or animals. We ourselves use water for so many different purposes. For example, drinking, cooking, taking bath, washing clothes, cleaning house, cleaning utensils. So for all of these, we need water. Not only that, water also plays a very crucial role inside our body. It helps in transporting the uh, nutrients to different cells of the body. At the same time, it also helps in excreting out the wastes from our body. Not only that, if you look at the plants, there also if you stop watering a plant for a week or so, what happens? The plant dries up and gradually it even dies. So water is very critical for plants to grow because uh, all the nutrients and minerals that is that are needed by the plants, they are absorbed by the plants through water because everything is present, all the nutrients are present in the water in dissolved form. So water is extremely important. But these days what we see is with increasing population, the demand of water is also increasing because everybody needs water. Nobody can survive without water. So as a result, what is happening? We are seeing that there is some shortage of water. Basically, what's happening is the population is increasing. So the number of people who needs water, that's increasing. So the demand of water is increasing. But the source of water, because from where do we get water? So primarily water is obtained from the water bodies, whether you talk about oceans, lakes, ponds, rivers, or the underground water. So those are the various sources of water. So the supply of water is not increasing in pace with the increasing population. So as a result, we are seeing shortage of water. And this shortage of water is threatening because without water, nobody will be able to survive. So everybody needs water. So what can we do? So one simple thing that we can do is we should stop wasting water because if we waste water, what's happening? So anyways, we have less water, which is not able to fulfill the demand of the increasing population. On top of that, if we waste water also, then the shortage becomes all the more. So we should stop unnecessary wastage of water so that at least, you know, we can at least demand the basic needs of the increasing population. But with water also, there is contamination of unwanted materials, which is kind of polluting the water. So let us discuss about water pollution. So what is water pollution? Contamination of water bodies with undesirable substances. So what could be these undesirable substances? So these substances could be insecticides, fertilizers, ammonia. So let me write it down. What could be these uh, substances? They could be detergents, which, we off, which, which are like partially soluble in water, but at the same time, they are strong chemicals. It could be insecticides or pesticides, which are... often used in uh, for cultivating to increase the crop yield we often use intensicides pesticides fertilizers so all of these are basically nothing but chemicals so when you mix chemicals with water what's happening the water is no more pure it is getting contaminated it could also be something some strong elements like ammonia sometimes even the excreta gets mixed up with water because you would have come across a lot of places especially the pilgrimage places in India where you see that a lot of people they pass urine in water bodies or they pass their excreta in the water bodies so what's happening so your urine or excreta they are nothing but they contain all the waste materials of your body and those waste materials they are getting dumped into the water so the water is getting polluted so all of these could be the undesirable substances that might be present in water and that might be polluting water. So all of these are termed as, in one word, we can call them as water pollutants. That means the undesirable substances which pollute water are called water pollutants. Now, when we talk about water bodies, what are these water bodies? These water bodies could be lakes, rivers, oceans, ponds, 
So all of these are water bodies. Now, how is water pollution harmful? Now, they, they, they have severe harmful effects. For example, the first threat would be the aquatic life forms because whether you talk about a pond or a lake or a river or an ocean, so every in each of these water bodies, there is a huge diversity of life. That, that is, there are a huge number of plants and animals which live in the water. So if the water gets polluted, what happens? The fishes, dolphins, crabs, etc., which live in water, they completely depend on water for the survival. So the water is polluted, so they all die. Disease and even deaths of humans, because like human beings as well as other animals, they all consume water directly or indirectly. Now, if the water is contaminated, they can cause many severe diseases. For example, in human beings, they can cause diseases like cholera or typhoid. So these are all waterborne diseases. Like that's why you would have seen that people often say that, you know, do not uh, drink water from unhygienic places because if the place is not hygienic, so there are chances that the water would be dirty. The water might contain some uh, harmful chemicals. And when you drink that water, you might fall ill, right? Sometimes in severe cases, the, this can even lead to death of a lot of people. Skin problems. In fact, taking bath in contaminated water can cause several skin infections due to the microbial infection because the contaminated water will not only contain harmful chemicals, it will also contain some harmful microorganisms, maybe some bacteria or some fungi and those bacteria and fungi might cause several type of infection in the, on the skin. Adversely affect plant growth and productivity. Now, not only animals, a lot of aquatic plants are also present, right? So, and those plants are again totally dependent on uh, the water of the water body. So, if the water is contaminated, those plants will also die. They will also not grow properly. And the water which is used for irrigating your fields, that water also comes from a lot of water bodies. For example, it doesn't rain every day, right? So even if you want to irrigate your field, sometimes you also depend on the water of the nearby river or the nearby lake. So if that water in that lake or river is contaminated, then what will happen? You are bringing that contaminated water and watering the uh, crops in your field. So the, all those plants will also not grow properly, their productivity will also reduce. Disturb the food chain. Now this is interesting. Now what happens inside the water? Now let's say that the water, now let's say that the water is contaminated. Okay, so the water is contaminated. That means the water is polluted. It contains harmful substances. Now this water might be consumed by the small fish which lives inside the uh, sea or ocean. Now this small fish might get a disease because of the contaminated water or it might die. Now let's say that a diseased fish in turn is eaten by a big fish. So what will happen? So the big fish also might die or it might get a disease. Now this diseased fish might be eaten up by a human being. So what will happen? The human being might also get a disease or the human being might die. So if you look at this entire food chain, what is food chain? Where one organism is eaten by the other organism. So if one organism is impacted, for example in this case it was only the small fish which directly drank the contaminated water. The big fish didn't come in contact with the contaminated water or the man didn't drink the contaminated water but they indirectly consumed the small fish and as a result the man also suffered from a disease or death so basically this entire food chain is getting impacted so it is not only one set of organisms which are impacted but the entire food chain which involves that organism gets impacted so as a result, the entire aqueous ecosystem gets spoiled. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.